I've been meaning to make this video for quite some time now, uh, but uh, academics have been holding me by the washings. So some of you may may understand that. So I want to. So I've been wanting to make this video of the law of large number versus the gamblers again versus the gamblers fallacy, and I will also be looking at the probability of winning the lottery or the Powerball. And I feel like there is no better time to make this video than today as some of you would know a weird thing happened in the south african power so in the south african powerball lottery uh, yesterday on the first of december so let's get right into it so welcome to, to, to my channel this is my guy so this is your guy t and whatever whatever do whatever you have, you have you can do whatever you have to do like share subscribe and stuff like that so on the first of december 2020 uh the South African Powerball had a jackpot of 107 million rand with a total pool size of 119 million rand. And 20 lucky winners hit the jackpot, meaning that 20 lucky winners all got the correct combination, all the correct combination. And what are the chances that 20 people would win the lottery? And what is that combination? And as it turns out, that combination was 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and the Powerball pin 10. Yeah, so this looks like something which is weird and something that wouldn't come out in the lottery. But what are the chances that such a number would come out in the lottery? Mm -hmm. And some people have screamed it may be a scam, but was it? Let's find out. First of all, we would have to learn what is the law of large number and what is the gambler's fallacy. The law of large number states that when you perform the same experiment a large number of times, the average of the result will tend to be will tend to the expected value. So most of you would understand that if you have an unbiased coin and you flip it, so the probability of you finding a head or finding a tail is the same and is and it is at 50% or 0 0.5 but does that mean that if you flip the coin twice you would get a head and then a tail or that you would get a tail and then a head it is possible that you can get a tail and a tail and a head and a head but then what the law of large numbers state that the more you flip the coin the more the average of that would give you actually 50 percent so in terms of the gambler's fallacy the gambler's fallacy simply state that you would assume that independent event would affect each other that is for again that is for again that is for again that is for example a person who says that um, if i keep on betting the same numbers in the lottery uh, the chances of me winning are increasing every time which is not the same which is not true but i will answer this as we go on so some some of you who study uh or who want to major in some sort of okay so in some sort of like statistics or maths or maybe even or maybe even actual science uh, you may also want to to consider learning or understanding the limiting distribution function which i will also talk about it at the end of the video so first of all let us look at uh, the probability of winning the lottery in south africa that is hitting the jackpot the probability of a person winning their lottery from a draw is one in twenty million three hundred and fifty eight thousand and five hundred and twenty that is zero comma zero 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 five percent of the time and the probability that you would win the Powerball is 1 in 52,375,200 or that is 0.000000024% from each throw. And what the gambler's fallacy would arrive or what kind of the gambler's fallacy would arrive from this is that a person who would think that if I bet the same combination each and every time it means that I will increase my probability of winning, which is not true. Because the probability uh, of you winning uh, is still the same at every session. 
So if you bet on Monday this number and then you bet it again on Thursday, it will still be this same number. I mean, like, they will still have this same probability of winning just as any other combination of numbers. And so, again, so for example, let's say maybe one came out in the last session. It does not mean that it may not come out in the next session or that the probability of one coming in the next session will decrease. It is still the same because this event are independent from each again okay, so they are independent from one another however if you want to how, however if you want to increase your chances of winning you may bet uh, many times in the same session uh, that is if you bet different uh, if you bet different numbers that would increase your chances by 0 0.00000005% 000 or 0 0.00000024% in the power ball. So let's talk about this thing of South Africa. What are the chances that you would have uh, six consecutive numbers coming out in the lottery? The chance of six, the chances of six consecutive number coming in the lottery is the same as any other combination of number coming out in the lottery, which is of course zero comma zero 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 two four percent. So it is less likely to be a scam. And events like this, although they are less likely because they would only come out again zero comma zero 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 two four percent of the time it is still uh something that can happen and that probability is the same as any other combination so it is least likely to be a scam and this thing has been trending because like 20 people have hit the jackpot and also that these numbers come in consecutive orders and if you are interested you may even look at the taxes uh, uh, something called uh, bet or nothing uh, lottery uh, where where there are only 24 numbers and you will have to choose like uh, 12 of them which so if you check it you, you would see that most numbers do come almost again almost looking like they are consecutive numbers but I yeah but then I diverse from this conversation so how much should you bet how much money should you bet so that you are guaranteed a win? So first of all, let's talk about this. Each draw, you would have to bet five front, right? That is approximately 33 cent in terms of dollar. And when you bet, you would have to, to bet different numbers. At least one number should be different from each draw. And I will be looking at the power ball. So... If you want to stand a chance of 1% of winning, then you would have to bet 2,188,760 rent. Yeah? If you want to stand a 1% chance of winning, you would have to bet 2 million. In South Africa, the largest power jackpot was at 231,131,000 and 750,069 cent and if you were to bet on that number you, you would stand a chance of you would stand a chance of 109% which is of course not possible because some uh, draws would be the same so the highest you could bet was 211,860,000 uh, so so that you can be guaranteed a win that is standing a chance of 100 percent chances of winning but is this practical other than the fact that you would have to buy uh, more than 42 million tickets is this practical as it turns out no because South Africa has a law that you may not exceed uh, more than 2 million when you bet yeah so your chance still is lower than 1% so as I would imagine, most of you would actually stop here because most of you may not be interested in the law of large number and the limiting distribution function, but then that's fine. 
but for some of you who want to major in mathematics or actual science or even statistics you may even be interested in the following concept that is the law of large number and the limiting distribution functions what the law of large number speaks about it speaks about the expected values the average of a sample when you keep on increasing the sample size and what the limiting distributions speak about is the distribution of random variables so so as i said the more you increase uh, your sample size uh, the more your average of that sample size is closer to the expected uh, value the, to the expected value of the population and this can be seen from this graph that that it is possible that uh, you may have um, like a head to a consecutive time but then the, the, the more you flip your coin that average tends to go uh, towards 50% um, for an unbiased coin on the limiting distribution function this one speaks about um, random variables I mean it, it speaks about distribution of random variables which go to what um, a population uh, again which goes towards a population um, distribution the more you increase your sample size so let's say maybe your let's say maybe your original um, distribution is the curve in black and then these other curves which are in cut uh, they are actually from um, they are actually uh, from your sample size so the one which is green means that the sample size is actually small and the one in yellow it, it means that the sample size is bigger than the one in green but smaller than the one in red and the one in red is bigger than the one in yellow and the one in purple is bigger than the one in red and the more you increase your sample size the more you you increase it the more that distribution of that random variable or that sample would go towards a gain would go towards the original just gain the original distribution so this is just a glimpse of what um, these terms mean i may not go into details or give you examples i'm just gonna give you a glimpse and a proper definition and i hope that uh, this video has helped you so thank you again for watching you may follow me on instagram is this guy um, <clears throat> so yeah i hope that you have enjoyed uh, my video